This video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of circuit protection in association with Schneider Electric. They can be viewed individually or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate to prove that you've completed the course. If you're already watching this as part of the CPD package, we'll crack on. Now, our next type of protective device is a little bit different to the ones that have gone before because both of those kept circuits safe by disconnecting them when faults occur. However, a surge protection device, or SPD, will quietly and consistently monitor and keep your installation and connected equipment safe until it quietly slips away into non-functionality and requires replacement. So, what is it and what does it do? Well, most electricity distribution systems around the world use alternating current, or AC, to transmit electricity from the places that it's generated and get it to the places that it's needed. Now, we like to think of this AC supply as being a beautifully consistent and curvy sine wave, and for the most part, it is. However, there are things that can happen along the supply network and even in properties that can cause it to become a bit distorted and spiky giving us really brief but potentially damaging spikes in our supply. These spikes can cause serious damage to our installations and especially the equipment that's connected to them. And this can get pretty costly. If you think about how much your TV costs or other IT equipment you've got plugged in in your home, one surge event in the supply can completely fry them. So what causes these costly damaging surges to occur? Well, there's two sources. The first is lightning strikes. Now you may immediately scoff at this as your house has never been struck by lightning and indeed it's very unlikely that it ever will be. This is true and to be fair, if your house has the misfortune to be struck by lightning, then the devices that we're going to consider will offer pretty much zero protection to your installation. The problem for most domestic properties lies in lightning strikes taking place near to the cables and equipment spread across the country, bringing the electricity to your property. If there's a thunderstorm and lightning strikes the ground near a supply cable, it can actually generate electricity into the cable. And this will cause a potentially damaging spike or surge in the supply coming into the properties connected to that incoming supply cable. The other source of a surge can come from large electrical loads switching on and off. So if you're working on a property near a large manufacturing plant, it may experience surges caused by the machines and motors in the building turning on and off. So that's the problem and what causes it. How do we counteract this issue? Well, by the use of a surge protection device or SPD. An SPD usually contains either a gas discharge tube or a metal oxide varista. Both of these devices change their resistance depending on the voltage applied to them. So when the voltage goes up, the resistance lowers. So it's a bit like a pressure relief valve on a water pipe. When the pressure in the system gets too high, it opens and the water is safely run off to make sure pipes or more delicate items don't burst under pressure. An SPD is like a pressure relief valve for electricity. When the voltage surges or spikes momentarily, the resistance of the SPD drops momentarily, which stabilizes the voltage as current kind of drains away safely. It's a very clever device that could save electrical equipment from premature damage. When the 18th edition of BS7671 dropped, surge protection was a bit of a nightmare as you had to do some kind of fairly bonkers calculations to see if it was required or could be omitted. When the second amendment came out, it did away with all of that and made the decision to install surge or not much easier. Now, regulation 443.4.1, which covers transient over voltages due to the effect of indirect lightning strokes, states that, Protection against transient overvoltages shall be provided where the consequence caused by the overvoltage could result in one, serious injury to or loss of human life, two, failure of a safety service as defined in part two, three, significant financial or data loss. So they're all pretty straightforward, and if you're carrying out installation work in locations where these could be consequences, it's unlikely the owners of these properties would quibble about the cost of an SPD. But then the regulation gets a bit weird for me personally. It goes on. For all of the cases, protection against transient over voltages shall be provided unless the owner of the installation declares it is not required due to any loss or damage being tolerable and they accept the risk of damage to equipment and any consequential loss. So for some reason, if you're installing a consumer unit into a domestic property where none of the three indents apply, it's now down to the installation owner to decide if they want it or not. 
That feels a little bit strange to me. Surge in a domestic property isn't as serious a threat as it is in large commercial or industrial installations, but we don't leave it up to the owner as to whether they have short circuit protection or additional protection in the form of an RCD. And yet here, we're putting this really quite serious decision in their hands. For me, again, personally, I wouldn't give them the option. I'd just install it as standard. Let me know what your preferred option is in the comments below if you're able to. Now, the other thing that you need to watch out for with SPDs is that they won't trip a circuit when they've been activated to protect against a surge. So you'll never have a visible sign that they've done so. However, over time, they do kind of wear out internally and eventually they will stop working. At this point, the SPD will be triggered to show a different colored panel in this little window here. So it should at the very least be explained to the homeowner that they need to check on it periodically so that it can be replaced with a fresh one. And it should also form part of your periodic inspection process if it's already been installed on the property. The next video in the series is on AFDDs and can be found by clicking the link right here or by clicking the next button below if you're taking part in our free CPD package. Thank you very much for watching.